All right, guys, so here we are uh, with another From the Coach's Desk. I'm Jordan. This is Jake, the, he, he, the pen sure. thief. Mine doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the pen thief. Um, don't be pendactic about yeah. what pen you use. It's pedantic. But anyway, let me give you guys a tip real quick. Um, I want you to go to the top right-hand corner of your screen, click the gear, okay? And go to playback speed, click that, and then click on 1.5, all right? If time that you have to watch these or listen to these is ever uh, 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 an issue, just increase the playback speed. I like 1.5, it's gonna cut the video, uh, it's gonna make the video 50% faster, and you're still gonna be able to understand everything you hear, all right? So keep that in mind, tip, playback speed. Today, we're gonna talk about Progression. All right, progressions are the defining hallmarks of training. Jake, number one, what is a progression? And number two, what are the limits to people applying progressions? Okay, so progression is simply making something harder, okay? And you can progress um, your volume, all right? How many reps you're doing, how many rounds you're doing, how many miles you're running, or how many minutes you're training, or you can progress intensity. Okay. Um, intensity means, in the sake of the weight room, is loading, right? 135 to 140 to 145, um, or in regards to like the metabolic conditioning side, how hard you're going, your pace, right? So obviously running a 12 minute mile is much different than running an eight minute mile, okay? So that would be a manipulation of intensity. We can also progress our frequency, right? Which is kind of a component of volume, it is, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, but like how often you do something, it is also a way we can progress it. Essentially, you're making something more challenging, you're adding a little more stress, because that's the idea of training, is that each time you train, you apply stress, your body is fatigued, it recovers, it adapts in preparation for more stress, and then you hit it again, and you hit it again. And that gradual, over time, by progressing things and making them harder, you're pushing your body to new, um, new limits. So before you answer the question, what are the limits of people uh, uh, applying progression? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> let me say this. I want you guys to, if you've ever used uh, progression in your training, put it in the comments below. Whatever your favorite one is. My favorite one is two plus two. Um, it's a really simple progression. It applies really well in the weight room. Uh, you can use it with any lift. Uh, and it's, it's incredibly simple um, to apply. So what do you think is the, what do you think are the limits to people applying progression? Well, um, first of all, I think the big limit is that it's just not fun because you have to repeat the same effort, right? Um, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's just not fun. I mean, yeah. well, for some people it's not. But people who would like want to go to the gym, they're looking for that, like how good I feel right now and how much I enjoy that session, that short-term perspective, um, it's not gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. If people enjoy putting in work for an extended duration and then seeing the result, then it's awesome. I mean, like yep. it, with any program that we've done that has lasted three or four months, everyone kind of is getting a little like, I'm kind of over this, but when come test day, they're like, best program ever. That's why we did all that. That's why, you know, and all of a sudden their mood has totally changed. Yeah. Um, so so it's not very fun for some people because you have to, to progress, basically it has to stay almost exactly the same, right? You don't change a bunch of things, you keep it exactly the way it is, and you just progress one variable. You make it slightly faster, you make it slightly longer, you yeah. add five pounds, you add two reps, right? And so, for example, I mean, you might be bench pressing Monday and Friday for six to eight to 10 to 12 weeks, right? But you're applying progression and there's transitions and deloads mm -hmm. in there, but it, it gets repetitive. So I think that's number one, why yeah. some people don't do it. Number two is people just don't understand it. A, they don't understand that this is one of the most foundational principles in program design is to apply progression to one of those three um, aspects. And if they do do it, then most likely they do it incorrectly. Yeah. And, and then what happens is they, they make too aggressive of a progression, too big of a jump, like, oh, I did two miles today, let's do four miles next week. Yeah. Right? And then let's do six miles the next week, and then eight miles, and then they hurt themselves <laughs> yeah, on the fourth are, week because yeah, they haven't really done scary. any running at all, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden they have too aggressive of a progression. Yeah, I mean, in that simple example uh, that you illustrate, if you go from two miles to four miles, that is a 100%. Uh, increase double the of volume your, of your volume yeah, yeah. and uh, typically you want to make like 10 percent because your body has to adapt to not just your muscles but your connective tissues as well um, and so if you're progressing too fast this is why you can get injured uh, this is one of the leading causes and, being, uh, and just being able to do it right I mean like when me and you were young we didn't follow the programs you know mm -hmm. like when we were going you go in the Navy I was going to the army it was like I'm just gonna go run seven miles today right mm -hmm. there was no build up because the thing is when you're young 
um, your body can tolerate a lot more stress and the chance of injury is a lot lower. When you get sure. older, you're in your 30s, your 40s, um, you can't just go out and cold step 25 kids anymore. Like you're most likely gonna incur an injury that is gonna bother you for a while. Yeah. Um, so although just because you can do something, you know, doesn't mean it should be a progression like that, right? Yeah. Like in theory, most people can go out and run four miles, but if you haven't been running, you're not gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna start off with two miles, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then I'm gonna go to four, four, four the following Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's a double in volume. Like within week three or four, that's probably gonna catch up to you. That's right, yeah, you're not gonna be able to recover uh, from all, all of that volume increase. Uh, you know, I think another limit um, that people have in, in applying progressions, specifically applying them consistently, um, is, the, is, is perfect being the enemy of good. They try to come up with a perfect progression yeah. rather than just a good progression, yeah. you know? It doesn't need to be a perfect progression. Another layer in that limitation uh, is that progressions are always conditional. A progression is always, if I am able to X, Y, Z, then I will one, two, three, okay? So if I can finish my last two rounds at plus two reps to my first two, then on the next one, then I will add, uh, then on the next time I do this, I will add two reps or one rep to every single round that I do, okay? That is an if-then statement, all right? Progressions are always conditional. Well, if you come up with a good idea for a progression, you may think, well, wouldn't it be better if I did this too? But now you're adding another layer to your progression. In, in an effort to make your progression perfect, you are actually dissuading yourself from executing just the good one, okay? Do the good one, feel the benefits of it, and then after you have some experience with it, you can come back and, and tweak it if you want. And this way you keep the progression simple, you keep it gradual, it's not going too fast, and you keep it attainable or reasonable. You're not making it too big, all right? That's really, really important. Yeah, and then the big one is gradual. That's the, yes. I mean, anytime we've taught a programming seminar and people will understand circuit design pretty well. They're like, okay, I'm gonna design a speed circuit or I'm gonna design a work capacity or a strength. But then what happens is in a four week window, they progress it way too aggressively, mm -hmm. way too aggressively. Now, I understand it does take time and practice to like be able to like nail it the first time. Yeah. Um, but a good rule of thumb is uh, start a little easier than you want to, right? That's right. Because you know the goal is like, hey, either every session or every week or every microcycle, it's gonna get harder. And then typically you're gonna follow a progression, I'd say, four to eight weeks typically, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. and then we usually probably go in the four to six windows, kind of our bread and butter zone, mm -hmm. and then we hit like a reset window, yep. and then we do it again. And, and just because you hit the reset doesn't mean you wipe the, the slate clean. You basically just kind of will probably pick back up, you know, from maybe week seven of the previous eight week block, and then and then hit it again, start building up again to kind of allow your body a, a, um, an opportunity to kind of like reset and let everything settle because you've been hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. And when those harder progressions take a toll on the body, at some point you're gonna to need to rest, but then you yeah. can pick right back up where you left off. Yeah. Uh, I also really like um, repeating progressions, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing I like to do a lot is, give us an example, so that we don't jump off. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, I'll give you an example. Let me describe the, the idea first. So you start here, okay? And then you progress from here to here. So let's say in the first time you do it, you're here. Second time you do it, you're here. The third time you do it, you don't go to here. You stay there for un, you know one or two times, and then you go back up. So we have this sort of uh, like this ramp, a plateau, and then another ramp up. Um, so for example, you could do um, like a, a three by ten. Yep. Okay. And then let's say we're going to do um, a volume progression. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go three by ten, and then you step up here to a three by twelve. Yep. Okay. And then you repeat that three by 12, and then you come up and you go four by 10 mm -hmm. now. Um, and so three by 10 to four by 10, you've gone from 30 to 40, and you, you've yep. used 36 as your total volume twice in that time mm -hmm. to allow your body time to adapt mm -hmm. and to actually be able to hit that four by 10 without putting your body at risk of like really losing your technique or whatever it may be um, so that you're, you're not risking injury for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so progression, uh, question for you guys, is your training, and if you're, if you're following one of our programs, probably it's progression, unless it's a, a very basic beginner one, right? Or like one of the minimal ones. 
But does your program have progression? Is your training systematically getting harder week after week in a gradual and reasonable manner? And are you taking some kind of deload windows in between each of these, you know, four, six, eight week blocks? Okay. Because if you're training at the right intensity and you're actually applying progression, you're going to need that. That's like right. You start hitting those last couple of weeks and it gets harder and harder and harder. At some point, you're going to need to stop, reset, kind of get your shit together, and then start back through that next phase. Yeah.